Hello friends, The Design Screen. I get a lot of questions about which tools to use, what's the order, how do I make that design efficient and get the process done in a reasonable amount of time. And that's what this video is about. The workflow in the design screen is set up by two primary factors before we ever scan, and that is adequate occlusal reduction, and there's other videos that talk about that, and also setting up the interproximal contact shape and form on the adjacent teeth to the tooth you're designing to give you a great interproximal footprint. When that's done, this software works so well. So there's five steps I'm gonna go through. Number one, I always check my spacer as soon as the restoration is proposed. Then I consider biogeneric variation tool if I need to use it, which I do a lot. That way I can customize that beautiful morphology that we see in this software, and that's biogeneric variation. And then I'm gonna go through the last three steps, and that's setting the restoration up to fit the arch, fine tuning my occlusal contact profile, and setting up my interproximal contact and the emergence so these restorations drop in and we don't have to touch them. And that is what this video is about. The bread and butter for posterior restoration so my restoration just drops down, the margins are on, the interproximal contacts are spot on, and I don't have to adjust the occlusion in. So let's go ahead and get this thing started. Let's review the flow in the design screen when we're doing a single posterior restoration. Several things I want to be aware of to set it up right. Let's go back to model screen. Check the model to verify the seat. That's really, really important. In fact, on the very first bite registration on this, it was overmounted. We went back and updated that buckle scan, and that's really, really important. Model axis is pretty right on. We want to make sure the curve of speed is on because the proposal will be perpendicular to the sagittal plane. And in most circumstances, posteriorly, we're looking straight down on that crown because the restoration is prepared perpendicular to the occlusal table. Draw the margins accordingly with the prime. We can see very detailed subgingival margins on the distal here. There was some decay extending way subgingival. As we observe, you can see there's quite a bit of burr curatage here on the distal and mesial. We manage that with hemostatic gel, no cord is packed. Check the insertion axis. This is actually the milling axis. We don't wanna see any little yellow marks on that margin. Otherwise, the restoration won't go down or there'll be an open margin. When a restoration is proposed, the first thing I like to look at is parameters. We wanna check the parameters check the spacer. In this case, 100 is my default. If the preparation is rough, even though you've done the best you can, we're gonna go up to about 130. Step number two is adapting the restoration with the biogeneric variation tool. This will provide many wax up shapes morphologically at your beck and call. The buckle corridor looks pretty good at this time. I would say the overall morphology for this case is pretty right on. Let's just check what the bile generic variation tool will do for us. Scroll the bar and you'll see a lot of different type of proposals. Release where you see a proposal you like and the computer will repropose. You can see there's a little different anatomy. Therefore, this tooth appears to be strong in occlusion. There's three basic steps I run through in my workflow in designing. Number one, does the tooth fit the arch? Buckle corridors. Rotation, Curva Wilson. In this case, the buckle corridor doesn't look bad. The second molar does have a longer buckle cusp. Better observation will be observed by turning on the lower arch, and we do have some room to work with. So in this case, let's pull the buckle cusp down using the shape two directional tool, which is one of my main tools. Observe where the arrow is placed. When the arrow is on cusp, it will take that cusp out to the buckle a little bit. Let's observe that. See it's going a little bit to the buckle. In this case it's not bad. Most of the time what we're going to do is catch the lingual side of that triangular ridge on the cusp and that will protect the shape of the buckle cusp in alignment with the arch. See what we just did? And that's actually perfect. Grab the triangular ridge, the arrow will go slightly lingual, and that's the best way I have found to bring those cusps down. 
The last step to make sure the tooth fits the arch is close the interproximal contacts. Let's bring the distal marginal ridge up just a tad. It's even with the adjacent marginal ridge on that tooth. And now the restoration fits the arch. We're gonna come back to the interproximal contacts in just a moment. The next is occlusion. In this case, let's use our two directional shape tool and take that occlusion down close to where we want it. Let's build up a mesial marginal ridge contact and now we're ready to refine our occlusion. Click on adjust contacts. The occlusal command will reset that occlusion virtually to our parameters. The parameter for occlusion is going to be occlusal contact strength negative 50. That is aqua when we're using our occlusal contact tool. Now we're not done with the occlusion yet even though that adjustment was pretty good. What we want to do next is make the contact slightly smaller, one millimeter square, and on non-inclined cusp. My favorite tool for that action is removal at 10%. So that's removal at 10%. With a really small paintbrush size, what we're going to do is move these contacts so they're ideal. We're going to go with more of the mid contacts since that buckle mesial marginal ridge is on an inclined slope. For the mesial lingual cusp, let's build up that lingual contact so we're more on the occlusal tip of that cusp. We want that contact to be at the very tip of the cusp so it's not on an inclined slope. Let's adjust the occlusion again to the add tool and we'll add it back on the mesial marginal ridge. Now we're going to use the remove tool at a very small paintbrush size will allow us to make these contacts one millimeter square. That's a balancing interference there. We want it on the occlusal contact. So that's at the top of the occlusal contact. Maybe it's a little too small now. Let's add just a little bit back. Removal tool at 10% works really well. And you'll see that it doesn't really divot where we just adjusted. The smooth tool which I used to use for this, and a lot of the students I see coming through my classes still use the smooth tool. What it's going to do is round that cusp tip and take away the beautiful morphology. So to preserve that beautiful morphology, use the removal tool at a really small paintbrush size. I feel one more contact on a landing pad here in the marginal ridge will provide a better tripod. Now we have multiple tripods on the lingual cusp and on a landing pad. This is a very stable occlusion. This will act as a GPS system as that tooth settles. That's really important to know that. A broad contact will be micro interference and will create more frematis on the tooth. Once the occlusal profile is accomplished, our next objective is to address the interproximal. And we want that footprint to be directed by the adjacent tooth. The distal here looks really good. And the mesial is a little strong. Let's go back to our contact tool, adjust the mesial. And that will provide us a nice contact there on the mesial. Now with the prime, I'm finding straight aqua is pretty much right on unless I have a short clinical crown. With zirconia, I'm gonna add just a little green to the occlusal side of that contact. Back to the form tool, add a 10% small paintbrush size. We're gonna add green right to the top of that contact. Cervically, let's spot the contact a little bit. That will keep it from holding up in the undercut of the adjacent tooth. We can observe the undercut better by taking that upper arch and making it 50% translucent. Looking in there proximally, we can see that we could still go down a little more cervically with that mesial contact. On a distal, I think we're spot on. We can't go more cervically, otherwise we'll be in the undercut of the adjacent tooth and that restoration won't see. And I happen to know that this went right down in the mouth. We didn't have to touch it. With that observation, we can add just a little bit more cervically here, removing the green in the mid section. That will hold up a seat. And now we have a nice interproximal contact. Let's check for the undercut again, and it's spot on. And now we're ready to mill. That's the flow that I have found works best for me in my clinical theater. This tooth went right in, we didn't have to touch it. We had ample occlusal clearance, and that's the secret to design. With adequate occlusal clearance, create ideal occlusal morphology, align the interproximal contacts, and we're ready to go.